the nth degree. Barkley gets a boost of intelligence and shows the rest of these punks what's up. We begin with Beverly and Barkley performing a play for our main cast and the few random extras they could wrangle. Picard isn't there though, he couldn't be bothered with such frivolous bullshit. I think Data's reaction was my favorite though. Do you know if it was a real play they were doing? It was. Do you know what it was? Something about Cyrano something or other. I don't know. I don't know anything about plays. I saw an Aladdin play when I was a kid, and that's as far as it goes. <laughs> After, he has an impromptu counseling session with Troy, and it was a pretty good conversation where they bring up his past behavior in hollow pursuits. The Enterprise arrives to a big-ass telescope that has stopped relaying data, so they're checking it out. And I thought the model work was cool. They find an unknown object floating nearby, which Riker somehow identifies as some kind of probe. Picard decides to send someone expendable to check it out, so Geordi takes a shuttle and brings along Barkley. It's not reacting to any of their scans until Geordi tells Barkley to turn up the juice. Then it flashes and knocks Barkley unconscious. It was amusing to me how Picard's log entry seems like he's more concerned about the computer than Barkley. I noticed that in this episode, everyone pronounces his name Barkley, but he still says Barclay sometimes. I say Barkley. I'm going with Barkley now, because everybody's going with Barkley. I don't want to stand out. I gotta fit in with the crowd. Peer pressure successful. In sickbay, Barkley starts spouting out medical advice to Beverly, and she is incredulous, but she's not a very good doctor, as we've seen. Maybe she was worried that she might lose her position if she gave in. <laughs> the probe approaches the Enterprise and matches their speed when they try to get away. And the music during this whole part was very total recall. Hey, no, watch it! can't get away, and they're having trouble blowing it up. In engineering, Barkley overrides Geordi and somehow increases shield strength, allowing them to use photon torpedoes to blow up the probe. Geordi's not happy about it, but it really wasn't that different from all the stuff Wesley used to do. Geordi tells everyone that fixing the telescope would take weeks, but Barkley interjects and says he could do it in a few days. And during the next acting workshop, Barkley is f***ing awesome. <laughs> Philosopher. Scientist, poet, musician, duelist! Here lies Hercule Savignan, the Cyrano de Bergerac! Afterward, Troy decides to talk to him, and he says he found confidence he never knew was there, which made me think of Geordi and Transformations, and how that subplot didn't go anywhere. He asks her if she would like to go on a walk with him, and she says it would be inappropriate, but seems to enjoy having been asked. During the scheduled repair, Barkley is on the holodeck, which might have led Geordi to think he was falling back into his old ways, but he finds him talking to Einstein. And Barkley seems to be the superior intellect between the two. Geordi confronts Barkley about his behavior, and I know he was concerned, but I was questioning why he was concerned. Jealousy. So he takes him to sickbay, and Beverly says, The production of neurotransmitters in your brain has jumped by over 500%. Lieutenant. You could very well be the most advanced human being who has ever lived. The officers have a discussion about what to do with him, and I liked Riker's reaction when Troy mentions his behavior toward her. He did make a pass at me last night. A good one. I thought it was interesting that the meaning was how to deal with him, but as they point out, he hasn't actually done anything wrong. So they decide to just let him be for now. Especially since they need him to help fix the telescope. Geordi is called to engineering because one of the telescope's reactors is, quote, starting to chain, which, as typical for movies and TV shows, is supposed to be a bad thing, but in real life that just means the reactor is on its way to functioning properly. Data mentions the time before one of the reactors goes critical, which, again, in real life would mean the time until it's working like it's supposed to. Are you sure about all of that? Yes. Okay. I'll put it in, and, you know, if anyone goes against it in the comments, you're going to have to defend it. And put your name on that comment. <laughs> They do eventually say the reactors are overloading, though. Barkley is irritated because he says the computer isn't fast enough to keep up with the changes in the telescope. And he goes to find a better interface. He runs to the holodeck and makes a neural interface connected to the main computer. The neural interface part didn't exist yet, but he connects his two terminals into the main computer just by telling it to do so. And that seems like an oversight. But a predictable one for these characters. He uses the Enterprise computers to shut down the telescope's reactors, 
And when they ask what caused it on the bridge, the computer responds with Barkley's voice. So he is now the main computer himself, and he says pulling himself out would mean his death. How did you feel about the whole visual of his situation? I thought it was goofy, but I couldn't tell if it was supposed to be goofy or not. I really liked it. I thought it was cool. I like that the lasers were actually a real thing instead of put in post-production. The officers have another meeting to figure out how to get him out of the computer, and I liked that they took this step to disable the computer from monitoring them. But does that mean that the computer is monitoring everybody all the time for everything they're doing everywhere on the ship? Ensign Kowalski has excreted 2.4 kilos of solid waste in bathroom A24 at 1700 hours. <laughs> Is that a lot? I don't know how much a kilo is. <laughs> I don't know. I just threw in some numbers. <laughs> <laughs> they decide they have to figure out a way around Barkley without actually talking to him about it first. Barkley says he's figured out how to take the ship farther than they've ever been before. And even though Picard doesn't want to do that, Barkley won't stop. And does that mean it's farther than they went in where no one has gone before? Because that seemed pretty far. Or maybe he wasn't on the ship at that point? Yeah, I was thinking about that, but then he does have access to all the computer stuff, so... I guess he's not so smart after all. When he begins preparing the Enterprise for a super warp, Troy goes to the holodeck to talk to him. He compares himself to a parent over the children of the crew, and she tells him Picard will do anything he can to stop him, which causes his lights to blink faster. Jordy is ready to enact his sabotage, but it's too late. So Picard tells them to forcibly disconnect Barkley. But since he's in the holodeck and can do literally anything, he already has a force field set up. And then they start to go through his new super warp. How did you feel about those effects? Maybe think of a PSA for drug use. <laughs> I thought it was fine. Data says a bunch of stuff that doesn't really make sense, and they pop out in the center of the galaxy. And considering what just happened, Troy appears to be seated very comfortably. And a big face appears in front of them. Barkley comes to the bridge and explains what's going on. The probe was designed to instruct outsiders on how to reach the system. They were able to reprogram me. So the aliens are also exploring the galaxy, but they do it by bringing the galaxy to them, which seems like it would not be very effective. I was imagining if I was exploring life on Earth and had someone forcibly bring one of every animal to my house, it probably wouldn't yield a lot of helpful information. Cut to 10 days later, and the Enterprise is returned to Federation space. Barkley is back to normal, which everyone is happy with. But he is depressed about not being a computer monster anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it could have been worse. could have been like Superman 3. <laughs> Troy tells him they still have to go on their walk together. And as they leave, Barkley shows that he has retained at least a bit of his increased intelligence. The nth degree... Overall, it was cool to see Barkley come back, but the episode failed to really take advantage of his persona in a satisfying way for me. Once he became intelligent Barkley, everything that made him an interesting character was gone. Given that it was just one episode, I didn't think playing with his character that way was a bad idea. It just made him less interesting to me for the meantime. And I thought it was weird that no one tried to talk to him once he became Computer Barkley. I wish there had been at least some interaction between Data and him. I thought that would have been interesting. The underlying reason for everything happening had so little thought and time devoted to it that no one even brought it up at the end, which was disappointing. It wasn't a bad episode, I just didn't find it particularly interesting or entertaining, and I thought it didn't really explore the ideas that were presented in an interesting way at all. I thought it was just okay. I gave it a B-. I mean, ours are pretty close, but I really like this one. I gave it a B+. I thought it was a good idea to not give us an exact copy of the previous Barkley episode, and even though he only appeared in one episode, I thought his character made enough of an impact that they were able to do this kind of episode with him. I really liked this one, but that ending felt like they didn't know how to finish. But thankfully, that big face was not another freaking Nagilum. I get that it was unusual for Barkley to be doing all his stuff, but in the beginning, he was actually doing the types of things Wesley used to do, but the episode gave it a completely different spin with ominous music cues and the ways the other characters reacted. The fact that the first discussion about Barkley was primarily about how to stop him instead of exploring it further past the one basic ass medical scan was ridiculous. Barkley using the holodeck with Einstein was the kind of stuff I would think would be a very effective use of the holodeck. Not only do you have all of humanity's knowledge in one place, but you can actually interact with it. And at the end, when Picard said the technology they got from the aliens would take decades for them to figure out, it seemed hypocritical. 
While the Federation seems totally fine with holding technology from lesser species upon encountering them, they have no problem madly grabbing superior technology from those who have surpassed them. If they really believed in the Prime Directive, they would refuse that technology and insist that they wait until they got there on their own. The Prime Directive only applies to people that haven't achieved warp travel, right? But the way I was looking at it, the super warp technology the aliens used was analogous to the Federation's regular warp travel. If they haven't figured that shit out yet, then they probably shouldn't be taking it. But to get back to the point, I would be okay if Barkley comes back again. Me too, but I hope he's not a computer next time.